Right, year 10. Um, hope you're all keeping well and not missing us all too much. Um, as you would have got from the emails from school, we're going to start to try and do um, more video lessons and I think more live lessons from next week and possibly. Um, so hopefully it will help you a little bit more and keep you a bit more focused. I'm sure you're bored to death of being at home all day just watching Netflix and not even getting changed or whatever but um, hopefully we can give you a bit more support so the summative assessment we've obviously um, pivoted that's a managerial word you might need in, in future life to doing the spectacles it means that when we do come back hopefully in September um, We'd have saved ourselves some time, so instead of starting Order the Flies from scratch, um, we can go into Macbeth and teach that fully. Now you all did the spectacles in year nine. If there is a couple of you who've joined the school and you haven't done it, then that's fine. We'll sort something out for you. Um, but the rest of us should be fairly familiar with it. So I'll just turn my WhatsApp down in the background. Right. So this is an actual exam paper from a couple of years ago. Obviously I've highlighted one, either and all, because we still get students that decide to do all the questions written down because they can't read. So you've got how does and how far does Priestley present Mr. Burning as an unlikable character? And then you always get the two bullet points. What does he say and do? So Mrs. Berlin and how does he present her now I'll, I'll go for a character question in a minute and then you also get the second question is normally more based on a theme or dramatic device or something like that how does Priestley's character inspector suggest ways that society could be improved so that's the theme question about social injustice check this for you I'll give you the mark scheme which I've taken from uh, the exam board um, focused on the keywords your essays are structured you include other references you've showed in the web if you do these things you can get a very good mark the reason we give you the mark in grid before you attempt it is so you know and I'll just notice a spelling mistake exactly what you need to do I don't think enough of you are looking at this because a lot of the feedback we give you for your assessments is you haven't used enough quotes you haven't explored the effect you haven't used the writer's name well it's all here so I would almost as you're writing your essay I'd keep coming back to this grid and ticking it off now in the real exam you won't have this but you should and by then be so au fait with it and you've been doing it since you're eight that you can actually and go in and say right well, I need to do this 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 and this and you just bullet point it at the top of the paper and you make sure you cover those points also to help you because obviously it's you know different times um, interesting times um, I've listed this is from the exam report they always list under the mark scheme list of things that you um, could have talked about now it doesn't mean you have to and it doesn't mean you have to talk about all of them but it's to tell the examiner say if you get an examiner that maybe doesn't teach an inspector calls or um, hasn't taught maybe year 11 this year it's just a, a reminder to them of the range of things that you could talk about now there's no way you can talk about every single one of these in an exam answer you only got 45 minutes so what I would do is what I'm going to show you how to do is how you do your plan so I'm going to talk you how to do question one and then in the second video we'll look at question two. So how far does Priestley present Mrs. Berlin as an unlikable character? So I'm going to put a question here just from my use. You don't need to do that in the exam. You just put um, question one in the margin. Now Mrs. Berlin. 
it's character questions. So what I'm going to do is put a few notes at the top of it to sort of talk you through it. Right, now, there are... Now, let's, no, I'll tell you what, we'll do the question first, sorry. So, got the word present. So basically, um, uh, uh, what is the writer doing? You've got Mrs. Berlin, obviously, but then you've got unlikable. No. She doesn't exist. She is, um, she's been used by um, J.B. Priestley. So, what you need to do is think, um, what's her purpose? If she is there, uh, if, she, if she is unlikable, then why is he doing that? So with the character, um, characters are important because one, they represent ideas. So you need to have in your head, well, what ideas does she represent? Two, we find out about them for what they do, say, and this is what a lot of students miss out on. What others say. So that's important. Because just because it's about Mrs. Berlin, it doesn't mean you can't mention other characters. Particularly, there's a bit at the end of the play where Sheila um, is quite upset with her. And that tells us a lot. Because that tells us that Sheila has changed, but Mrs. Berlin hasn't. And Sh Sheila, at that point, has become um, the more important character. And she's going to break away from her mother. I'm doing inverted speech about things and, my, and fingers. Um, but it's not just breaking away from Mrs. Berlin, it, it's breaking away from her ideas and her way of life. Um, the other thing with the character is change. Do they change? No. If, if they do, and why they change is important. So, for example, in Animal Farm, um, the animals either become more selfish which tells us that they love the system and they're abusing it, or they become sort of more downtrodden and disheartened because the system has crushed them. In this play, you could argue Mrs. Burney doesn't change at all. Now that can be quite, that is just as effective. That shows just how heartless she is. And then we get back to the keyword. So I would uh, and look at question one, what she says and does. Sheila and Eric's reaction, I just mentioned that. Her comments and reaction to the inspector, now the way she reacts to the inspector is quite interesting. Her lack of progression, oh, I said that, oh, it's almost like what I'm doing. Um, now, AO1 is just how you write, AO2 is your analysis, AO3 is the wider context. Now, if you look here, um, the keyword there is irony. She doesn't know it's her grandchild, but her venom and anger about it is pretty grim. Ideas about social class, her loyalty to her husband, her alacrity in welcoming the news of a non existence. That means her sort of like um, how relieved she is, and her imagined despair when the final phone call is made. So, I would, in any plan, you can use spider diagrams, do bullet points. If you want to get a quite good grade, I would get into the habit of your plan starts with your opening sentence. Because your opening sentence, in any English essay, answers the question. The rest of the essay is you proving that you're right. So, let's go for a little bit of colour. Priestley. Present. So remember, you can always uh, and reword the question. Also, use your author's name. Present Mrs. Burling as a totally unlikable, unlikable. Could be a word. So it's because I've got it really small, so I can have both things. Totally unlikable. Remember what we said, always include a triplet at the start. Because then this bit is totally un unlikable, unredeemable, and, oh, common 
and ironically tragic so get back to in a moment in terms of context which isn't on here but um, you've got the idea this Greek tragedy idea that she, that she killed her own grandchild that's very Greek um, but we did that stuff in year 9 you should remember on Aristotle but we'll go over that again and when you come back so I've got me three things I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about oh, her being unlikable and talk about her being unredeemable and I'm going to talk about the the tragedy right so I've got me three strands then and that's going to form the basis of my essay and we'll start with unlikable and then you can attempt the rest yourself if you so wish now I'm going for red, lost fantasy, come blue. So, Miss, Mrs. Burling is fundamentally not a nice, that's a bit pleasant. Right, ignore Mrs. Summer Hayes. I'll just close that down. It's fundamentally not a pleasant person. Her manners and attitude are shocking, even to the Posh audience, not the best word, but it'll do. Feel free to improve it. Anyway. Posh audience of the uh, late 1940s. Her uh, arrogance to the inspector shows us her. Uh, superior attitude and world view of entitlement 